my big brother Sterling. I'm the only pro football player that's in the Hall of Fame. And I'm the second best player in my own family. Now just let those words sink into you for a second, and you can see how moving and powerful Shannon Sharp's Hall of Fame speech regarding his older brother, Sterling, really was, and how much he looked up to him. I don't really talk a whole lot about it, but I do believe my brother is worthy of being he in the is. Pro Football Hall I of Fame. I your brother should have been. <laughs> if neck injuries had not cut Sterling Sharp's career much too short, he would be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame alongside his younger brother. In seven dominant seasons with the Green Bay Packers from 1988 to 1994, the elder Sharp was named to five Pro Bowls and All-Pro on three occasions, once for each season he led the league in receptions. So let's begin where it all started. But before we get to that guys, we're about 3,000 subscribers away from hitting 15,000 subs. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. I'm going to be uploading content more regularly with a new series of videos, the first being this one here where we take a look at past player profiles. I will still be dropping those compilation videos you guys always seem to enjoy also. Growing up, Sharp lived in Glenville, Georgia with his grandparents and siblings, including his younger brother, Hall of Fame tight end, Shannon Sharp. He graduated from Glenville High School playing running back, quarterback, linebacker, and was a member of the basketball and track teams. As a wide receiver at USC, not that USC, but at the University of South Carolina, Sharp set school records with 169 career receptions and 2,497 receiving yards, and a since broken record of 17 career touchdowns. He also set the school record for single season receiving touchdowns with 11. Sharp's number two jersey was retired by South Carolina at the end of the 1987 regular season, making him the second Gamecock to be granted this honor while still playing. After a fantastic college career at the University of South Carolina, Sharp was selected by the Packers with the seventh pick in the first round of the 1988 NFL Draft. Sharp started all 16 games his rookie season, catching 55 passes, for 791 yards and a touchdown. In his sophomore season, Sharp became the best receiver in the NFL not named Jerry Rice. He set franchise records with 90 catches and 1,423 yards, and his 12 touchdowns were the second highest total in the NFL. In his third season, Sharp earned Pro Bowl honors in 1990 by catching 67 passes for 1,105 yards and six touchdowns. But he suffered through a disappointing 1991 campaign in which he fell to the top 1,000 yards for the first time since his rookie season. In 92, a 23-year-old named Brett Favre was given the starting job at quarterback. After years of playing with mediocre quarterbacks such as Don Mikowski, Mike Tomczak, and Anthony Delwig, Sharp finally had a talented quarterback whom he'd be catching passes from, and he would respond with one of the greatest seasons by a wide receiver in NFL history. He caught 108 passes for 1,461 yards and 13 touchdowns, and this was in 1992 way before the NFL truly became a passing league where you would have guys throw up astronomical numbers that would have to be adjusted for. Anyways, in that same year, Sharp became just the sixth player to win the receiving triple crown, leading the league in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. His 107 receptions broke the single season record of 106 set by Washington Redskins receiver Art Monk in 1984. In 1993, Sharp broke his own single season reception record by hauling in 112 passes. He became the first receiver to top 100 receptions in consecutive seasons and his 1,274 receiving yards and 11 squares ranked third in the league. I played against him <laughs> and his brother was a dog. First of all, if you bump him, he go manhandle you and beat you down. <laughs> and you back off, if he catch it and face you up, you got some problems. Mm -hmm. So his brother was a dog that you did not want to deal with and how in the world is he not? And you got some busters in the Hall of Fame and he ain't? Mm. I, don't, I don't understand. Also, for the first time in Sharp's career, the Packers would advance to the postseason where they faced the Detroit Lions in the Wild Card round. Sharp turned into one of the most memorable performances in postseason history, catching five passes for 101 yards and three touchdowns. His third touchdown was a come from behind, game winning 40 yard reception with just 55 seconds remaining, which made him just the ninth player. The Packers were eliminated the following week by the eventual Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys, despite a magnificent performance from Sharp who hauled in 6 catches for 128 yards and a touchdown. In 1994, Sharp concluded one of the greatest 3 year stretches by a wide receiver in NFL history. He caught 94 passes for 1119 yards and 18 touchdowns. His 18 touchdowns were the 2nd highest single season total in NFL history. Later on, Randy Moss would pass both Sharp and Jerry Rice with 23 touchdowns in 2007. 
In the final game of his seventh season in 1994, Sharp suffered a severe neck injury from what looked to be a harmless challenge and was forced to retire at the age of 29. Five yard completion when it looked like Favre would be sacked. Now the handoff to Bennett got four over the left side and Sterling Sharp is down. What happens is he's he's right here. He gets involved in the block. I mean, he's so big and strong. He gets involved in the run play, and you see him there taking on the defensive back. And it was a rather unfortunate freak accident that caused Sterling to retire early. You can clearly see that Sharp was in a blocking position for a run play, and it was such an innocuous challenge by the linebacker. And next thing you know, Sterling's on the ground, unable to move after suffering a neck injury. I was prepared to quit. He cried when I told him I couldn't play anymore. It hurt me. It hurt me. In his seven-year career, Sharp played in all 112 games where he caught 595 passes for 8,134 yards and an amazing 65 touchdowns. Just to put this into context, I'm going to show you Sterling's seven-year career and compare them with his contemporaries. And from these comparisons, you can truly see how great of a wide receiver Sterling really was. I posted Sterling's stats alongside six other current and probably soon to be Hall of Famers in Jerry Rice, Terrell Owens, Randy Moss, Calvin Johnson, Antonio Brown, and Julio Jones. And you can clearly see there's not much disparity in these numbers when put up against other all-time greats. Therefore, I think it's pretty cut and dry that Sterling was a certified beast in the 90s. Anyways guys, let me know in the comments section what you guys think about Sterling Sharp. Do you think he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame or not? At the time of Sterling's retirement, only three NFL players averaged more receiving yards per game and only eight players had more career receptions and touchdowns. From 1992 to 1994, Sharp's average season looked like this. 105 receptions, 1,285 yards, and 14 touchdowns. These stats are ridiculous, even in today's passing league. And while Sharp was blessed with Favre as his quarterback from 92 94, Favre had yet to blossom into a superstar. In fact, in each of the three seasons following Sharp's retirement, Favre had won the MVP award. Now let's imagine that Sharp had continued playing with Favre. He would have posted absolutely eye-popping receiving totals. He might have even broken Jerry Rice's single season record for receiving yards and touchdowns. He most likely would have won a Super Bowl ring on his finger had he had played with the 96-97 Packers team. And his achievements and accomplishments would have been endless. And all these little things would have surely helped mount his Hall of Fame case even more so. Nowadays, with his NFL media career behind him, Sterling spends his time with his one true passion, golf. In an interview with Sportsnet, Sterling discusses how he does not even watch football games anymore. His love of the game extended from him playing and that playing was the only thing he ever wanted to do. So when asked for his take on President Trump disinviting the Eagles to the White House after their Super Bowl win, Sterling replied, I don't follow football anymore. No, I play golf. If a football game is on, it has to be a big one for me to watch. I think I saw three minutes of the Super Bowl and not together. I got no reason to watch. When I played, I watched. When I did TV, I watched. I don't do either anymore, so I don't have to watch. All I do is ask. All I can do is ask in the most humblest way I know how is that the next time you go into that room or you start making a list, look at Sterling Sharp's accomplishments for a seven year period of the guys that's in the Hall of Fame at the receiver position and the guys that have the potential to be in this building. That's all I ask. I don't say, hey, just do that. The next time you go in that room, think about Sterling Sharp's number for seven years. That's all I ask. And if this moving Hall of Fame speech from Shannon Sharp wasn't enough for you to consider Sterling to the Hall of Fame, why don't we listen to what Packers legend and Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champion, three-time NFL regular season MVP, Brett Favre has to say about his wide receiver, Sterling Sharp. When you look at statistically one of the greatest receivers not in the Hall of Fame, do you think Sterling is a Hall of Famer? Absolutely. I have this argument with people all the time. And, and it's really not that much of an argument. You can't really, the only thing you can say about Sterling is he didn't play as long as others. The time that he played, the, the numbers that he, you know, he put up, absolutely 100% deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, that guy was an incredible player. And had he not left the game, and he would stay, but you know, his neck, obviously, was what uh, ultimately uh, took him from the game, unfortunately, because th this guy would have put up tremendous numbers. And I think he, he certainly, if a guy like Gail Sayers and, and some other ones are in the Hall of Fame hey. with a career, 
Uh, absolutely, he deserves to be in. Guys, thanks for watching this video. I'd like to continue to keep dropping content for you guys, but if you could help out by liking, commenting, and subscribing, it really helps promote the video out there with the algorithm. Stay tuned for my next video next Tuesday, as I will be trying to upload every Tuesday and Friday.